I am working with Ali Naji, Anja Bojic, and uh, Rudy Podgornik, uh, my collaborators. Uh, and uh, at first, let me tell you a brief introduction to viruses. Uh, many of viruses uh, could be approximated uh, as a spherical-like shape from uh, for the outside of the uh, virus. Uh, some viruses uh, are made of capsids, uh, which are in fact uh, made of proteins. The proteins are encoded in the viral genome, which could be RNA or DNA. Uh, but some viruses, like the famous coronavirus, uh, are um, enveloped uh, by a lipid membrane, and uh, the genome is inside this lipid membrane. They also may have spike proteins, uh, and the HIV virus is also has also the same uh, kind of uh, strategy uh, to infect cells. But many of viruses are uh, non-spherical as well. For example, some of plant, uh, the first uh, plant virus. Um, which was the first virus discovered was tobacco mosaic virus, which is a uh, rod-like uh, virus. Uh, or some uh, DNA bacteriophages, which means uh, uh, the virus is infecting bacteria. They also have a non-spherical shape, and some of them has um, have very long tails. And all uh, viruses depend on living cells for their reproduction. Now, I want to uh, tell you something about importance of electrostatics to viruses. As Ali, uh, I mean Ali Naji said uh, in his talk uh, yesterday, viral shells uh, are uh, charged. Uh, they could have positive or negative charge uh, for the outside or inside uh, of their surface. Uh, for example, it is uh, well established that RNA viruses use electrostatic interactions, uh, direct electrostatic interactions with the interior uh, part of the capsid uh, of the uh, virus they're uh, uh, in, uh, encapsulated inside. Uh, but for DNA viruses, uh, for example, uh, some bacteriophages, uh, the strategy is different and um, we have turret-like uh, shapes ma made from uh, DNA strands. Uh, which is um, the codes needed uh, for virus to replicate. Uh, th uh, for this part, you can also remember co DNA condensates that Ali talked about yesterday, and uh, for such uh, structures, multivalent ions are uh, crucial, which we also uh, want to focus on, uh, focus on in this talk. Actually, uh, double-stranded DNA uh, has two uh, elementary charge for every base pair, which is about 3.4 uh, nanometer of its length. And in the solution, we have both monovalent and multivalent ions. Uh, and uh, in addition, it, is, it has been shown that uh, presence of multivalent ions, uh, for each uh, virus, there are some multivalent ions which are crucial for uh, its proper formation. And uh, as Ali said yesterday, multivalent ions can cause uh, uh, in uh, attraction between uh, same sign charged surfaces. So uh, to study the effect of multivalent ions on uh, viral capsid stability or viral shell stability, we have used uh, three different model models. At first, uh, we used uh, an empty thin shell representing the empty capsid, and uh, we used Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, we used uh, we, we uh, simulated explicitly multivalent ions, such as uh, spermine with four valency uh, plus four valency, and um, monovalent salts, but uh, was um, in fact. Um, uh, simulated implicitly as a device screening uh, environment. Then uh, we tried uh, to study the effect of, for example, our DNA genome inside a bacteriophage with considering a nano droplet having a constant volume charge density of rho. Uh, and then put this uh, droplet inside the, vir the viral shell. So now in the second model, the viral shell is not empty anymore. Uh, in our next uh, model, we used, um, in fact, uh, we started to simulate uh, a done uh, uh, experiment on 
uh, BMV viruses uh, encapsulating uh, nano, uh, gold nanoparticles, having a coating layer, which you can see over here. This is the gold nanoparticle with radius R0. Then we have uh, the coating layer of the gold nanoparticle with radius R1. This layer is charged, in fact, and uh, could have positive or negative uh, charge uh, density on its surface. Uh, but it's in, um, impenetrable to multivalent ions. Then we have uh, the, the viral shell of BMV virus, and um, the radius is R2. And um, in fact, uh, it is uh, always positively charged. It has a great positive charge. And for uh, the Hamiltonian of the system, we used uh, both a De Bois-Huckel interaction and effect of emit charts inside the gold nanoparticle between ion, each pair of ions and between ions and uh, charge surfaces which are uh, placed at R1 and R2 and between uh, charge surfaces themselves. Uh, our results show that, for example, uh, for the empty shell, charged empty shell, which was uh, our first model over here, uh, we saw that um, it, we have multivalent counter-ions uh, of a positive of positive charge for a plus four valency uh, ions like uh, spermine. Then we observed that for more uh, negative uh, uh, charge density of the viral shell, we have more negative electrostatic pressure, which means more inward force on the shell uh, and could and this can uh, stabilize the viral shell because the force is is um, is not any more uh, uh, positive because of the same sign charge of the different parts on the viral shell so this was uh, an, an effect only arising from uh, four valency ions if we replace uh, the four valency ions with three or two valency ions, then we couldn't see this uh, type of uh, counterintuitive result. Then, uh, when we had a uh, nanodroplet encapsulated inside the virus, not only we saw that for a more negative uh, sign, more negative charge of the uh, of the row density, char volume charge density of the droplet, but uh, in addition, for more negative surface charge density of the uh, capsid, we could have more negative pressure or more uh, stable capsid, which is very counterintuitive, and, uh, uh, but also it can um, explain that why some DNA viruses have um, uh, negatively charged shells instead of positively charged shells, which, which comes to mind uh, at first. Uh, then, uh, for the... Uh, 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 Lely, I, had a, I had a question for you. So the, sure, sure. The negatively charged... So, so basically, the, the thinking is that the, the negative charge is screened, that's why it's stabilized, or...? No, 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 it's just... No, no, it's... An, uh, by screening, uh, we just will have less uh, f uh, repulsive forces. Do you know? Uh -huh, yes. uh, but, yeah, but uh, because of uh, multivalent counterions, not co-ions, but counterions, uh -huh. uh, the, the ions with the uh, opposite uh, sign of charge, yes. uh, we could have this effect because, let me show you the next slide. Okay. For example, okay. here, yeah, for example, here we have counterions for the shell, and as you see, they condensate very um, uh, precisely uh, around the uh, opposite the charge shell. Uh, and then each of them could, I, I, this is my uh, imagination, each of these, uh, uh, in fact, multivalent counterions tries to uh, neutralize some of uh, uh, the uh, positive charge of the uh, viral shell. And uh, when they condensate over this um, shell, they can, uh, in fact, induce uh, positive uh, 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 attraction between these different parts, or, for example, between uh, the two shells, which I am going to explain next. Uh, did I answer your question? Yes, thanks, thanks. All right. So, Lady, um, you are keeping track of time, are you? 
I think you are uh, at 11 minutes at least, because I'm a little confused myself. Uh -huh. All right. oh, so, so you have maybe two or three minutes. OK, go on. All right. All right, uh, sure. So um, in the presence of um, uh, a gold nanoparticle encapsulated, we saw that not uh, only, um, let me, see, not only, but different sign between our uh, the first and second charged surfaces. Uh, the, the different sign between them not, is not the only answer for stabilizing this uh, uh, nanoparticle inside the virus, which was the strategy used uh, in the group of uh, the Professor Dragney. But also, if we have, um, in, uh, in here, uh, counter-ions are uh, negatively charged. If we have multivalent uh, neg uh, counter-ions, uh, we could see even attraction between uh, positive uh, R2 and positive R1. And the, the reason is, as I uh, answered uh, to the question of uh, uh, Ali asked, um, so this is a strategy that we could use to stabilize uh, any kind of uh, coaching layer uh, for the Gordon nanoparticle. Then uh, we have used charge regulation currently for uh, some problem, some problem uh, which has been done experimentally. We are we have been uh, trying to find uh, interaction between an FM tip and a viral particle. And now we are working on coronavirus uh, using charge regulation theory, which is more precise and uh, accounts for uh, different uh, uh, dis dissociation or association of uh, hydrogen uh, charge. And uh, virus like particles are, uh, in general, uh, important uh, specifically in medical uh, sciences. For example, um, uh, virus like particles do not have a wild type genome inside them, and uh, so uh, they are useful for vaccine production, targeted drug delivery, gene therapy, and so on. Thank you all for your attention. Well, thank you very much, uh, Laili. Um, uh, almost at the 14 minutes um, mark. So uh, just maybe I make a comment to, because we had one question to Ali's question that uh, this is the type of interaction I was uh, talking about in my talk. Uh, these are correlation interactions. Basically it's not screening, it's completely different from device screening. So okay. because you have lots of, yeah, uh, neutralizing charges in the form of a plasma, a very dense plasma, and basically lately they managed to show they're all the whole picture, but we can talk about it later, that can create a lot of negative self-energy for the whole complex, you know, complex of nanoparticle, you know, genome charge, uh, within the simple model we are using, actually. So, um, thank you very much, uh, everybody. Yes. So, we are uh, 15, 15